Call the meeting to order. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Farmer. Here. Council Member Sandu. Here. Council Member Campion. Here. Council Member Lozano. Here. Mayor Lampson. Here. Let's stand for the silent prayer and the flag salute. Council Member Sandu, I think I'm going to have you do the flag salute since I believe it's your birthday week. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, would you like to replay the statement? This meeting of the Galt City Council will be cable cast on Metro Cable 14, the Local Government Affairs Channel, and the Comcast Consolidated Communications, and AT&T UVerse Cable Systems. The meeting is closed captioned and webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will air Friday, April 19th at 9 a.m. and Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. The City Council meeting videos are also archived on the City's website. A DVD copy is available for checkout from any library branch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any agenda approval additions or deletions? I will pull the item number nine. Number nine. For discussion. Okay, delegate signing authority bank arrangements. Uh, yes. Okay. Anything else? All right, do we do presentation first? Yes, please. We have presentations of the Sunday market by the Parks and Recreation Department. Our special events manager, Jackie Garcia, will be uh, discussing our taste of the Galt market. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Um, we had a slide of the flyer. Mm. No. Okay. So um, today I'm gonna I'm gonna be presenting to you a new event series called the Taste of the Market, which is every second Sunday um, starting in June on June 9th on the market grounds. Um, Taste of the Market will be a smaller version and bringing a new shopping and family fun experience to the community. The following is a highlight of vendors that will be available at the market. Um, we'll be having produce, variety of merchandise, delicious food, entertainment, as well as the use, treasure row, and kids play area. Um, our hope is that this will benefit the market and Galt by increasing access to fresh, nutritious food, supporting healthy communities, creating a relationship with our customers and as well as new potential customers, bring awareness to our Tuesday and Wednesday market, potentially bringing additional revenue to the market and no additional funding will be requested. Directly contributing to the City of Galt goals to pursue economic development, opportunities, and improving Galt's quality of life. 
The Galt Market hopes you will continue supporting the market's new endeavors and celebrate with us by visiting us on a regular market day or during the series. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mayor, I just want to stress a couple of things okay. in case there's some concerns from the citizens. This is not going to be another Tuesday or Wednesday market. It's a very small scaled back event. Um, again, we're doing it within our budget, um, hoping to just bring the Tuesday market. You know, the biggest thing that we hear is that, oh, we can't attend. We're working, you know, our citizens. So we're going to bring a little bit of the Galt market to them on the weekends, on the Sunday. So um, it. The traffic impact won't be there. Um, the volume of people won't be there. I just want to assure everybody that it's at this point it's just going to be a small scale. Okay. And the twenty-five dollar vendor fee is that less than what we normally charge? <clacks> That's about what we do charge, anywhere between twenty twenty-five dollars. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yeah, Armando, could you just for those that are watching, could and for myself, could you give me just a quick overview of kind of what it's about? Like as far as like tell us like we're gonna have music there and just the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll have performers there. We were having uh, music performers at the Tuesday Wednesday market. We decided to bring them to our Sunday market. Uh, we'll have uh, vendors, uh, food vendors, and uh, uh, retail vendors from our Tuesday Wednesday market <laughs> selling at at uh, our Sunday Taste of the Galt Market. Um, just a very smaller scale uh, Galt Market day. So there could be some vendors that are there that are your normal Tuesday, Wednesdays that'll come, yes. but there also could be some that don't come on Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, the majority, if not all, are from our Tuesday, Wednesday market. Okay. And they're very supportive. They would like us to open on the weekends. So, you know, it's something that we're just looking at, seeing what we can do. Is it going to be in like a more consolidated part of the mm -hmm. market grounds? Yes, it'll be in the northwest corner uh, next to the soccer field. Okay. All right. Thank you. It's exciting. I know we've been asking for something like this on the weekend, so hopefully everybody will come out and check it out. Anything else? <coughs> All right, on to public comment. Under gov government code section 54954.3, members of the public may address the city council on non-agenda items. <coughs> the public comment <coughs> section is for the city council to receive comments. Except for brief responses to questions, no discussion or action may be taken on any item that is not listed on the agenda. Please limit comments to a maximum of five minutes. Speaker cards are located on the table inside the entrances to the council chambers. Once completed, forward the speaker card to the clerk. Those persons wishing to speak on any item scheduled on the agenda will be given an opportunity to do so at the time that item is being considered. I have one card. I'd like to call Jennifer Hitlegoss and Taffy Lacey to the podium, please. Thank you. Good evening, guys. Thank you. Um, we are coaching the boys T-ball. And just a couple concerns that we had um, the last few weeks that we've been coaching. Um, one is we get our T-shirts for our little guys, and this isn't like, you know, all of them, but some of them are like a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Um, we don't know who orders them or who's actually doing all the getting stuff ready. I'm not sure exactly who does it. But um, that was one of our concerns, was just getting something that fit the kids a little bit better. Um, we also have a price of $65 and $25 for a late fee. So that's like any time you're outside of the very small window. Um, and we only get t-shirts. This is the only thing that they get to play. There's no hats. There's no anything else. So pretty much these parents are paying $65 for a t-shirt. The field's not being, um, what is it? Not it's not being maintained how it should. Um, when we picked up our equipment, we did have a broken tee, and we got our equipment in a garbage bag. Um, let's see, it's been very unorganized. They, don't, they didn't know if we were going to have our shirts on time. We call. They didn't know about opening day. So the last three years, opening day has been canceled. They have not 
they just bypass it and you, the kids don't get anything. We looked around at other, um, like Elk Grove, Lodi, when they cancel their opening day, they schedule it for a different day, which is exciting for the kids. That's part of sports for them. We feel that that's kind of very unorganized. Um, safety. So I don't know if you guys have seen Veterans Field. Some of the diamonds don't have the side rails on them or the side fencing, so it's just a fence. Um, it's not big enough to even protect the kids. The benches are, there used to be benches for the kids to sit in. Now we're having to corral 10 kids to make sure they aren't coming around that little bit of the ones that aren't the safety fencing and make sure they don't get hit, you know, and little kids like to run in front of those fences. So it's a big safety issue for us. And I think as parents, we've had a lot of parents that are very concerned. A lot of parents say, we want to go outside of Parks and Rec. Where's our money going? We have, we have 10 t-ball teams this year for boys. That's $6,500 that our parents are paying just for the boys. That's not including um, the girl t-ball. That's just for the 10 teams for the boys. Um, like we said, the fields aren't always being maintenance. There's high grass. There's we don't have to have umpires. So it's like there's anybody outside of that being paid except for maintaining the grass, which is like you know coming out once a week, mowing the lawn. We're playing on the veterans soccer field, I guess you would say. Um, to us, it's, I don't know. The equipment thing was kind of an issue because it's like when I went in to take the broken, this was our second practice we went to and one of our little bit of a heavy hitter, little guys, little, hit it and it just flopped over. And when I took it back in, it was like, well, what happened? And I was like, you gave us equipment that was probably from three years ago. Yeah, her one. bats are old, we got used balls. And they Six use balls. said, please make sure you bring these back. And it's like, we had to buy extra stuff just to get these kids to be able to play. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, we're getting stuff that's per prepared for even. And we want it to be better. Because like I said, it's just not our team. It's quite a few teams. We want Galt to have like a great, you know, sports program because these kids are going to grow up here. So we're just very, a little concerned about, you know, where the money's going. How can we put more into it, into the kids? get equipment up to par, get some safety fencing on the side, and maybe put some benches back out so the kids can sit there. Or just drop the pricing to 35. And, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> We're just here for help from you guys to see what we can do. <laughs> so, thank you. What okay, uh, uh, okay um, thank you very much. Um, is Would you guys be willing to meet with um, Director Solis and kind of go over some just discussion then we can maybe have a report back to council absolutely on that do you have our contact information Donna um, it's on the card yes. okay we have your contact I'll information contact you tomorrow okay, okay. go ahead yeah okay. what, what age group was that we have four and five four five and six okay. you guys play at veterans right we do play at veterans okay. and we have yeah. a lot of teams there's 10 teams that go out there and that's just the boys that's not the girls you know Softball, because my, my six-year-old's in the girls' softball. So, and that's another thing is like her coach came to me and she was like, we don't have our equipment. We're not, you know, nothing's been. Yeah, two practices, they had no equipment. So, and they had to go out and purchase on their own equipment just to get a practice going. So. Well, I just want to let you know that we, I mean, I and the rest of the council, we really are passionate about making our parks and rec and everything as best as it can. And I know Director Solis does as well. So. I'm sure when you meet with him, give him your input. If you have other parents <coughs> or coaches that, are, or that are coaching, come and um, just tell them how you feel because input's important so we can try to improve on what we're doing. And We did have a lot of parents that want to come and we didn't want to over take this place. <laughs> so we oh, just, we value oh, your input, so thank you. And... Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. So we'll be in contact. And okay, thank you. Yeah, we can do. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, so do we go over... The pulled one or we go over the consent first? Consent first. Oh, reports by city council members on regional boards, commissions, and committees. Vice Mayor Farmer? Nothing to report. Council Member Sandu? Nothing to report. Council Member Campion? Uh, yeah, I, today I met with uh, on the um, South County uh, HCP. We did interviews for uh, an executive <coughs> director and uh, um, the board's decision will be uh, announced uh, next meeting, two weeks from today. Okay. Council Member Sand, I mean Lozano? 
Yeah, just a couple of things real quick. Uh, I attended the SACOG Policy and Innovation Committee meeting uh, where we went over the budget for the next year. Um, one of the things that kind of was interesting to me was uh, the, the SACOG budget's made up of federal, state, local, and other money. Um, the federal percentage of federal money is about 42%, states 14, uh, local money is about 22, and then service to others, so things that SACOG does where they're paid for services, it's about 15%. So it's pretty interesting to see how it's split um, and where all the money comes from. So it looks like we're going to get a balanced budget brought to us soon. Um, the other thing that they talked about um, was the Green Means Go Advocacy Program, which I reported on last meeting. Uh, they are asking um, the um, state for $400 million over four years, so $100 million a year, um, which, which is a huge ask. Um, but they have um, Assembly Member Cooley and Senator Pan who are interested in hearing uh, that not in, in legislation, but in as a budget request. And so they're going through that process, spending a lot of time doing that. Um, and they talked a little bit about government housing proposal, uh, the governor's housing proposal that we mentioned a few meetings ago here, um, and how it's tied to, possibly tied to roadway construction money. Um, it looks like, at least from um, the staff's perspective that they're not going to attach uh, penalties for not building certain types of housing to to roadway maintenance funds. So um, that looks like that we're probably going to escape that a little bit. So um, that's how all I have on SACOG. Um, <coughs> Sacramento Transportation Authority, I attended a meeting there um, last week and um, there were presentations by a few of the cities, including Isleton, um, Citrus Heights, um, and Sacramento, and, and also Galt uh, on unmet transportation needs. And Mr. Uh, Selling did an awesome job uh, presenting. Um, the thing that I liked about the presentation that you did, and I think I mentioned, we talked about this, um, is that the last slide where he asked if there were any questions, was this huge picture of um, the hot air balloon uh, event from last year. And one of my colleagues on the board turned to me and said, I didn't know you guys did that. And I said, well, we don't do it alone, um, but the chamber does it. And, uh, and she's really interested in coming down and seeing what we're seeing, uh, what it's all about next time. So uh, thank you for promoting our community. Um, the way you did and, and uh, the presentation. So thank you so much. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, I had the Youth Commission meeting and it's, we have one more meeting until graduation happens. So we will be conducting interviews for new Youth Commission members in the next couple of weeks. And then they will figure out what events. They also helped um, at the extravaganza and they had a pancake breakfast. And that went really well. I have my air quality board meeting coming up next week. And that's about it for me. All right, so now information consent. All right, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of April, or accept the meetings as submitted, receive and file warrants as submitted, adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute contract amendment two to task order number two with the Corolla engineers an additional 15,000 for construction management services related to the industrial water treatment plant 2016 deep well project phase two. Adopt ordinance number 2019-02, amending the district zoning map of the city of Galt for the Parlin Oaks project. Adopt a resolution approving the city of Galt Senate bill one transportation project list for 2019-20. Accept by motion the City of Galt single audit report for fiscal year ended June 30th, 2018. Adopt a resolution authorizing the Director of Public Works to execute and submit periodic grant documents on behalf of the City of Galt for all Department of Resources Recycling and Recovery, Cal Recycle, grants for which the City is eligible. Adopt a resolution approving the final map for Morali Estates and authorizing and filing and recording and recordation thereof and two, authorizing the city manager to execute the subdivision improvement agreement with 
50 Gall LLC and the filing of and reordination thereof. And accept the treasurer's report as submitted. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Moved by Council Member Lozano, seconded by Vice Mayor Farmer. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Farmer? Aye. Council Member Sandu? Aye. Council Member Campion? Aye. Council Member Lozano? Aye. Mayor Lampson? Aye. Motion passes five to zero. And pulled, we have the delegate signing authority for bank arrangements. Council Member Sandu pulled that. Uh, yes, the reason I pull out, I just want to be a brief. Uh, I talked to Tom uh, uh, last week. I just kind of brief uh, explanation for the record. Uh, you know, we're changing the authority, what was the reason, and how long we're doing uh, uh, mayor and vice mayor that was authorized to for the checks. And the other thing on, on that was uh, we changing from two sign to the one signer. Uh, just be brief explanation why we're doing a, what kind of benefit and. This staff report was largely put together by uh, our finance director, Claire Tyson. And so uh, for the technical reasons that this comes to you in this form now and is is, is seeking those changes, I'd, I'd like to give her the courtesy of being able to uh, uh, walk through that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so when I began, we took a look at the um, these policies and procedures um, in collaboration with our city treasurer um, and found that our policies are very old in this regard. So the prior resolution is the mayor, vice mayor, um, finance director, city manager, <coughs> city treasurer were signers. Um, these signatures are only for the mayor and vice mayor, only facsimile signatures. So they don't actually have the ability to review or really do anything before their signature goes on, on the documents. Um, and it's kind of an old practice that uh, I'm not sure of any city that I know of that still does that. Um, I did check in with the bank to kind of confer with them to see if they had any um, agencies in their realm or any businesses for that matter, and they said no. So um, the single signer is more commonly done now, and primarily that's because the, the people who are reviewing all of the documents before the signature, and it's a facsimile signature, before the facsimile signature goes on the warrants, that's where all of your, your checks and balances occur. So all of the um, review is really done by the, the finance team in advance of that. Um, the exceptions are there are certain things that the city treasurer reviews before they occur. All wires are, are being reviewed by that by the city treasurer in addition, but it's all being done kind of electronically. So it doesn't really make sense to have people have facsimile signature on something they don't really touch or review in advance. So that's kind of the industry practice of why it's being changed. So we were just trying to update our current um, practices. I hope that answers your question, but if you have any others. Um, thank you. And I really appreciate having that off there because um, I'm totally comfortable with not having my name on a bunch of checks I haven't approved or seen <laughs> and having my signature out there on, I don't know how many checks we write, we approve the warrants after the fact. So it is a little strange to have your name on there before they're actually approved. Right. So thank you. So the practice that we've been using is more like, <clears throat> it seemed like it was like an old school symbolic type of thing than, yeah. than really, um, I don't know what's the word, procedural or, I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna now have the treasure, the, um, we're gonna have Sean, uh, our treasurer, sign the checks now, right? And it's not really like he's sitting there signing, they're all. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that you have the two signatures on the check is in the old days before facsimile signatures, someone had to come in and sign all the checks. And so there were two signatures. And one of the other things that, that, that occurs here under this policy is that there's a, a, a separation between the governor, govern, governance, the legislative body <laughs> that is approving the, uh, the, 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 the warrants themselves and 
the signatory on the check. And so, again, it's, a, it's, it's an additional check and balance. And you, a way you could think of it, under the old method, you had uh, potentially people who were voting to approve the, the, the checks also signing them. And so and now there is that, that separation. Thank you for the clarification. Welcome. Thanks. Anybody else? OK. Can I get a motion to adopt a resolution approving delegation of signing authority for bank arrangements to the city treasurer, city manager, and finance director, and require one signature for warrants, please? So moved. Second. Second? Okay. So moved by, was that Councilmember Campion? Seconded by Councilmember Lozano. Roll call vote. Vice Mayor Farmer? Aye. Councilmember Sandu? Aye. Councilmember Campion? Aye. Councilmember Lozano? Aye. Mayor Lamson? Aye. Motion passes, 5-0. All right. Did I say approve the consent calendar? Yes. I think I did. All right. Schedule matters. Do we have any? None tonight. None tonight. Regular calendar. City manager's office. Subject temporary infill residential fee reduction program boundary expansion. Uh, Mayor, I, on, on this subject, I may have conflict of interest. So uh, one of my property have, uh, I have acres on, on this boundary. So I will recuse uh, myself from uh, this discussion. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Councilmember Sandu. <clears throat> Should I wait until? Yeah. Again, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Haglin, who are having Mr. Rice? Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members, Chris Arias, Community Development Director. I'm filling in for Amy Mendez tonight, so I'll give you this brief uh, staff report. So as mentioned, the item you have before you is an amendment to the temporary uh, infill fee reduction program. We're essentially changing the boundaries. If you recall, Council approved the infill program back in December 2018, and at that meeting, the Council asked us to explore expanding the program to the northeast side of the city. So based on that council direction, uh, staff explored looking at properties in the Northeast area. And the bulk of the Northeast area is comprised of the Northeast properties within the Northeast area specific plan. And those properties pretty much have development attached to them. So we looked at properties that were outside that plan area. So the properties we identified that we thought fit the program mold were those, uh, well, they're shown on your map, I think as attachment mm -hmm. two, but they're generally uh, bound by or along Ayers Lane and then also East Stockton Boulevard north of Ayers Lane. And so these properties meet kind of the criteria of infill development. They are infill, you know, they're less than five acres. Uh, they're difficult to develop. So they're, they're very similar to the properties we looked at in the other part of the city. So, and as you know, uh, you adopted the infill fee program because infill really benefits the city, especially when we're making use of vacant lots. It's a way to get rid of a eyesore, you know, a nuisance property, and you replace it with essentially a property that increases uh, the, the property tax base for the city. In addition to that, it's a way for us to get housing without expanding uh, the city boundaries and services. So infill development <coughs> makes sense. No other changes are requested in the program. Uh, the funding still comes from the same source, which is a 75% reduction in the traffic and park impact fees, and then waiving the policy document, the planning policy document recovery fee. So with that, uh, you know, that ends our presentation, and we'd be available to answer any questions you may have on that. I appreciate you guys doing this, because we, we did ask you to attack this for us. Um, Councilmember Lozano? I, I do have a couple of questions, Mr. Rice. Um, so just so I'm clear, and I think I understand it, the, the properties in the Northeast specific plan, all of those that would be eligible for this program already have attached development to it? No. So the properties that we have chosen to expand the program, 
There is no development proposal on any of those properties. So they are all vacant. They've been vacant for quite some time. They were part of the city prior to the Northeast Area Specific Plan. When the Northeast Area Plan Area came in, they were that was annexed to the city. These properties were already in the city, so they were part of the old city, so to speak. Okay. So they, they are outside that plan area. Let, let me ask it a different way, because sure. maybe I'm not so, it could be articulating the way I need to. Um, there are properties up in the east, northeast area. Um, one is the northwest corner of Carillion and Walnut, right across from where um, we just approved the parliament. <coughs> Correct. Is that property eligible under this plan? No. Is it because it's too large? It is too large. Correct. It okay. is above the five acre minimum. In addition to that, we feel that that can develop on its own, that okay. there, there is enough scale there for it to develop under the normal programs. And then again, it's in the Northeast area that had rules to kind of help it develop in a way. So for example, based on uh, fee structure, the, um, the traffic impact fee is a little bit less for Northeast area specific plan development versus the rest of the city. Okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I was going to ask the same. Thanks, Rich. Um, so basically, this is targeting this is this is targeting our challenged properties, the Correct. small stuff that developers normally don't look at because it's going to be like a, you know, it could be like a duplex or triplex <coughs> or something maybe a little larger or, in and and the fees in the past we pencil out for somebody to want to do something with it. Yeah, right? bull's, bullseye. I mean, with these smaller parcels, what we're experiencing is based on you know all the rising costs the cost of land the cost of fees the cost of construction you know if there's not scale there it's tough for development to pencil out unless you know the property owner themselves where they've gotten a property uh cheaply because they've held it for some time maybe they can make it work but it's our understanding that uh, the properties that we've selected are not by developers they're um, don't have interest in developing and most likely would have to sell so that's kind of what makes them challenging. Um, it's just it's based on their size. And a lot of these are puzzle pieces, right? I mean, they're they're just we're just kind of like they've been skipped over for whatever reason, and mm -hmm. and some of them are blight. I've looked at some of them. Yeah. And uh, my last question would be: um, Is there still? Because I think we mentioned this when we passed the ordinance resolution the first time, <coughs> is that some of us had asked if um, this was going to be expanded to include um, the same exact thing, but for commercial not just applying to the various residential. So is that something we're still looking at doing? Yes, too? we're still looking into it. I don't believe we're ready to come forward with that. But yes, we are still exploring that opportunity. So would that, if that, if that at some point that came to us, then it would just kind of go back and it would apply to anything at that point that still wasn't developed. We just... That would be the intent, correct. The smaller parcels that are challenging uh, for whatever reason, and maybe the commercial... I would still think it would be based on size because my understanding of in the definition of <clears throat> infill is really five acres and under. So I wouldn't imagine that we expand beyond that size. Because I saw a couple lot, a couple of them that were in this area were commercial that I thought that was yeah. some ones that I had hoped that someday would be done something with. So Well, that's a good eye. And um, they're at the north the northeast corner of Ayers and East Stockton Boulevard, those currently have a highway commercial zone. Uh, but we do plan on changing that zoning. Uh, this is, that would be a separate project. So we wanted to include it. So when we do change the zone that they're already in the program area, I do plan to come back to council next month, I think, for a request to go after a planning grant that would allow us to, in advance, <coughs> do some uh, you know, plan updates that would help encourage housing production. And one of the things that I want to target is looking at possible rezones to encourage housing production. And I believe that site, you know, would be identified to help that. The site I was thinking was the one, if you cross the freeway um, on Amador, cross the overpass, you take a left right there on the frontage. There's the duplexes on the right side of the oh, road. Yeah. On the left side, there's just it's right there adjacent to the car wash. Yeah. I know it's not that yeah. little. That's, that's, that's how we commercial, right? right? Correct. Yeah. So that one we did not include because we still, you know, I remember when I first got here, there was a development proposal <laughs> for commercial uh, use there, and we still periodically get requests for commercial development there. 
So I'm still hopeful that we can get some sort of some additional commercial development uh, on that side, uh, south of the car wash, and it's not necessarily the best place for housing, you know, right along right. the freeway like that. So that's why we kind of kept it. Okay. Commercial. Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. So, Chris, since we have um, brought this forward on the west side a little bit earlier than this, have there been any bites on the? Yeah, uh, I think the first. Well, I don't think I know. The first bite really was the Trail Ridge Apartments. They would not have pulled their permit had we not done this program. Mm -hmm. So that expansion is a direct result of the uh, policy that you implemented. In addition to that, we've, uh, the phone's been ringing off the hook. So uh, <laughs> we've been uh, meeting with quite a few developers on some smaller lots uh, in you know, the older area, and I'm confident that we'll be bringing some projects forward uh, in the near future. Great, thank you. Any other discussion? No, I just uh, just one last comment. I thank you so much for doing this and working hard uh, to try to uh, take care of some of this infill. Yeah. Um, I, I personally, and from what I've heard from folks out in the community, is um, we understand that we have to develop, um, you know, to stay afloat as a city. <coughs> we are going to have to have a building and stuff like that. But uh, I would rather take care of what we can within the city limits that we have already. Uh, before we uh, go outside of that. And so, uh, but I think it's important that we have some development to help pay the bills uh, long term. And, uh, but this, this program really helps drive, I think, uh, some, some folks to come in and do some smaller projects. So. Agreed. Thanks. And I just want to note that Amy Mendez really did the hard work associated with it. We know we, that. Yeah, we, <laughs> you, did, you got the second team today. So. <laughs> We appreciate Thank you Amy. jumping Thank in. Thank Amy for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can I get a motion to adopt? Oh, is there any public comments on this? Anybody out there? Okay. Can I get a motion to adopt a resolution amending the temporary infill residential fee reduction program to expand the infill development area boundaries and include properties identified on the east side of Galt? So moved. Second. Moved by Councilmember Lozano, seconded by Councilmember Campion. Roll call vote. Vice Mayor Farmer. Aye. Council Member Sandu. Council Member Campion. Aye. Council Member Lozano. Aye. Mayor Lampson. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. <clears throat> Absent Sandu. Jackie, can I have you let him know to come back in? Thank you. He left. Hold on. Maybe he didn't understand. Okay. <clears throat> All right, next up. Special event sponsorship application overview, fiscal year 20, 2019 to 2020. Director Solis. I'm bringing back up uh, Jackie Garcia again, special events manager to uh, give the presentation. Hello again. Hello. Um, so thank you for your time. Today I'm gonna go over, here's the list of the 17 special events that we reviewed on April 2nd. Each event that is listed, the cost is associated on the right-hand side. Um, if you don't have any questions far as regarding the events or the cost, we're asking for your recommendation and provide a direction to staff regarding the approval of the amounts for each event. It's hard to see that. I believe we might have some discussion. Do we have any? I just wanted to clarify, so the, the amount that we're approving for all these is within the the amount that uh, for this program that we we're doing the sponsorship, right? I'll be glad to answer that. There is no max, there is no cap on the dollar amount uh, overall. For each individual, it's up to five thousand dollars. See, I actually have a question that I know you said that last time, but um, I was approached by somebody after that asked me so. I thought there was a cap of a certain amount that we did this program. So if we had 
50 instead of 17, if we had 50 organizations come out and I'll ask for $4,900 next time, we would be looking at approving a money times that many, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's the only question I had. Um, yeah. Thanks. I think the chief got the job done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Lozano, you look like you have some. I, I do have something. I, you know, I, I, I absolutely think that every one of these organizations are are worthy of uh, some assistance from the city. Um, you know, you look at uh, the partnership we have with the school, the high school district, and and uh, through FFA and and the chamber, and everybody does such wonderful things. And I and I absolutely believe that these nonprofits are are truly the fabric of what holds this community together. Um, but we but and and today I'm I'm comfortable moving forward on all of them. However, I will say this. As we go into the future, what Vice Mayor Farmer said, I hadn't even really thought about. Mm -hmm. 4,900 times, or 40, yeah, 4,900 times, however many come forward, at some point we're gonna have to make some decisions. And I think um, as it relates to our overall budget in the next couple of years, we're gonna have to make some of those same types of decisions in different areas. So um, I don't want to, to lose the thought that we're going to have to have some, you know, fiscal responsibility as a community, and this isn't a this isn't a, an issue of the special events request. I just want to make that point that we are thinking about what that looks like uh, and moving forward. It wasn't too long ago that we had a finance report uh, by Ms. Tyson um, that showed us running out of money in three years, and so whatever we can do to collaborate with these same organizations moving forward, I think we need to continue to do um, and, and be cognizant of the fact that we could have a time where many more organizations come forward and say, hey, we'd like X amount of dollars. And so we're gonna have to make, be prepared to make some tough choices at that point. So um, that's all I have to say, um, but I don't want anybody to misconstrue the fact that I'm hesitant to approve this. I just want to make sure that as we're looking forward uh, in the next couple of years that we are cognizant of the fact that we, we have um, limited amount of funds in, in many areas that I think we need to tighten our belts on. Yeah, and I, wanna, I just want to add to that too. Yeah, Rich is so right. You know, I look at this list here and and unfortunately, well, I guess I'm not saying fortunate, it's maybe a bad use of words, but um, it'd be great if we could afford to, you know, if our budget was in better shape than it is and we had, you know, um, twice as many events being put on by, that would, that would be awesome if we could do that. Um, for me, looking at the different, you know, all these different organizations here, the things they're doing, I mean, this is what makes Galt, you know, what it is. I mean, the city can't put these events on. Um, so unfortunately, we have to rely on these organizations and these people, most of them, you know, or all of them are volunteers to do this. So um, this is one of the things I enjoy about this job so far is being able to, to allocate this kind of money, for this kind of stuff. But um, I also want to, to people to know that we are in a budget crisis. And unfortunately, moving forward, there's going to be some tough decisions. Um, but I, with that being said, too, I was talking to the city manager yesterday in our meeting and we were talking about some of the tough decisions that might be coming down the pipe for us in the future. Um, but I'm, uh, I wanna say that I am gonna fight to keep stuff like this available because um, I think that, you know, try to find every means possible that we can make things right in our budget before we go after stuff like this. So this, that's, this, this is very important to me. I think it's important to all of us actually. So so I know that we're not, you know, hinting that we're gonna ax all this um, we're going to do what we can to try to keep this stuff alive. So that's what I'd add. Thanks. Council Member Sandu? Yeah, the only, <clears throat> the same thing, you know, the other council member, they, you know, mentioned uh, non-profit organization, they're the backbone of our community. And uh, certainly whatever, as a council member, we can do to help uh, uh, the non-profit organization, uh, we will help them. Uh, I believe, uh, 
this uh, the uh, the the cost uh, we have I very much is with them I think we should help I think that the 22,000 uh, uh, something like that and then also same thing that other my council uh, what they mentioned you know make the budget is very important to uh, you know is, is the taxpayers money and the other thing is is non-profit organization is really from our, my heart, we want, we would like to help them whatever we can, and also, you know, the, we we can coming year or the next three year we coming in 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 a budget guys. So, I'm talking right now we are only 17 events. It's maybe next year, <coughs> the year after, maybe a 25 or more events. So, I, I believe we can think next year when the things comes up or how, how we can help and what the maximum we can help uh, to the nonprofit organization. Thank you. Thank you. And, and to concur, these kind of events are where my heart is. Over the two decades that I've lived in Galt, I've seen um, a lot of new events and I've seen some events stop happening. So we do um, seem to have a rotating door around that. So last year we had how many events, Mr. Solis, not that were, we approved that didn't happen? Yeah, so we do have a few that drop out, and actually that, that money was able to help us with the sesquicentennial because we weren't expecting that. Um, so this really is the heart, and we know every, every organization pays back to the city, whether they're doing scholarships for our youth or um, helping the less fortunate. And so it is, it is a cause, and I think the, the whole council, that's part of the reason we're up here. So. We really appreciate you guys' hard work on this and working with us to get all these out there and approved. Okay. Is that it? All right. I just I do have a question of staff. I'm trying to to, and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to call you earlier, Armando. I was was busy. Um, what is the distinction between your soft cost? And I use an ex by example, Tiny Smiles. They have a soft cost uh, estimated at six hundred dollars and a hard cost estimated at forty two hundred dollars. What is the distinction there? Soft cost would be the rental of Littleton. Uh, there, we don't uh, charge for buildings. We don't charge for uh, staffing like uh, mid managers and managers. Um, so if a lieutenant went out and did traffic, he wouldn't be charged against a hard cost. Okay. Um, so, and and it, keep in mind these are all estimates because we don't know who's going to work these events. We don't know exactly what may come up between now and the time the event is. These are all estimates, so. In the, another example, the FFA Ag Boosters, the Farm to Fork, Fork Dinner, shows a hard cost of $900. Does that represent staffing or fees? That, that is all, uh, that would be, uh, the majority will be the police officers that are assigned to that location for that night okay. will be the bulk of that cost. And that, I assume, is overtime then? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Is there any public comment? <laughs> I think it was a farm to fork out there. All right. So, can I get a motion to. It says review. Okay. Review the special event sponsorship request for fiscal year 2019 and upon a motion, provide direction to staff regarding the approval of events, monetary amounts, and or in-kind contributions. So I th think, do we need to reword that to approve? You can direct staff to fund all the events okay. listed in the agenda report. So I would like to get a motion to direct staff to fund all the events listed in the, listed agenda. In the agenda report. Is there any difference of opinion on that, council members? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Moved by Vice Mayor Farmer. I'm gonna let council member Sandu have the second. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Farmer? Aye. Council Member Sandu? Aye. Council Member Campion? Aye. Council Member Lozano? Aye. Mayor Lampson? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you for coming. All right. Is there any communication? None tonight. City Clerk's report. Uh, we had all of the banners, the 150 year banners, delivered this week, and they'll start going up tomorrow. Ooh. Nice, that's exciting. All right, comments by staff? Nothing for me. Okay, okay. Mr. Selling? 
Yeah, I just wanted to dovetail on Councilmember Lozano's comments. I appreciated the uh, invitation and the opportunity to make a presentation to the Sacramento Transportation Authority. Uh, it was there were good pre presentations by all the agencies, and it was just a good opportunity to meet them. And one uh, pleasant surprise, kind of to me, was uh, the representative from uh, Elk Grove uh, was actually a co-op student of mine, probably I dare say a little over 20 years ago. So, so it was great to see him and. Uh, and maybe for anyone wondering uh, about my eye, uh, well, I'd love to say, as Vice Mayor we Farmer suggested, uh, it was during a uh, X Games uh, you know, uh, <laughs> practice session. Uh, no, actually, I uh, fell off a skateboard uh, with my sons this weekend. So. <laughs> oh, my. We actually thought community development had finally gone upstairs and <laughs> taken over. He violated the line. Very, very <laughs> I'm impressed that you got on a skateboard, just want to say. <laughs> All right, Mr. Arias. Uh, a couple quick items. One, uh, we are starting the CEQA environmental process for the East Galt infill, otherwise known as the Notch Annexation Project. So that's going to get underway. We expect that to take about six months. After that's finished, uh, that's when we bring the project back to Planning Commission and you all for approval. In addition to that, we... You know, I think most of you are aware that we're moving forward with the Carillion Boulevard Complete Streets Master Plan. We had presented the Public Safety Committee a couple weeks ago with a couple different alternatives. One alternative showed Carillion Boulevard as a two-lane road with the use of roundabouts and an expanded protected bike lane. Another scenario, just in brief, showed a continual four-lane road with use of stop signs and um, stoplights, but still an expanded bike lane. Staff, the preferred scenario is going to be the two lane with the roundabouts that we plan to present to Planning Commission in May. So we will make sure to notice and get um, public participation in that uh, decision. And then once that's, once we get a preferred alternative, we'll start the CEQA environmental process. And similar to the annexation, we figure about six months and then we'll be back to Planning Commission and City Council. So I think through the remainder of the year and certainly the end of the year, we're going to be busy. Thank you. Chris, um, I, I wanted to comment on that thing. Um, I've gotten a lot of emails about that, actually. So I, I want to make sure it is important that, um, that Mr. Haglin, if we can make sure that the uh, next time we get public input on that, it's um, well advertised. I'm not saying it wasn't, but I know it was part of the safety committee last time. But it, I think it may warrant its own standalone type of venue for input um, because I, what I don't want to do is I don't want something that like that to come go through all the processes of planning all that and come to us and then us feel like we didn't get as much input or we didn't exhaust all means to get input and then and then we have to backtrack or or you know you know throw out a lot of work for nothing. Right. Agreed. So, so I think. This next meeting we're going to have is really the third meeting that we'll have, public meeting, and we'll make sure to advertise it uh, strongly. We think that the first meeting that we had on it where we were uh, basically looking at all different <coughs> types of scenarios, uh, that was strongly attended. I think there were between 20 and 30 people at that one. The second meeting where we then looked at two, uh, prefer or two alternatives uh, was not as strongly as attended, but we used the same type of outreach uh, we'll, we'll improve on that for this next one. Thanks. Maybe get council coming to that one too. We did have a lot of, so they yeah, really, I, they I really took sure public input. You up to date too on where we are with the process. Cause I know you're getting those emails. I saw them. Yeah. So. But, but, but you know, Chris, there is a, because that's a next step to that project going to the planning commission, right? Correct. There is any uh, public outreach before you should go there coming to the Planning Commission? Uh, the only public outreach at this point will be notifying them of this meeting. So the Planning Commission will take you know, the, the reports that we provide, public testimony, and then provide direction based on what they're... So the citizens that are watching this right now wanted to have another avenue of input or chance to speak about this. They could attend the planning Absolutely. and speak at public comment. Do you know when the next planning Absolutely. commission meeting is? It's the second Thursday of the month. I think it's May 9th. Okay. It's on the website. It's on the city yeah. website. So, mm -hmm. okay. And so we'll make sure to have all the material available in advance and uh, provide that to you as well. Thank you. Anything else up your sleeve? No, thank you. Okay. 
Director Solis? I just ask that uh, council and our citizens be a little patient with all the weeds that you'll see popping up right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't spray when it's raining or when it's windy, and it's kind of been that the last couple of days. Uh, and we have a lot of trails and parks and landscaping that we maintain. So uh, we do have a plan. We are going forward with it. So just please be patient. If it's not done within two weeks, let us know. We should, Hopefully we'll get everything done and sprayed by that time. So, so Armada, who sprays? Is it actually your department or is it the um, hired out landscaping department? Both, okay. depending on what, what area it is. Okay, Yeah. thank you. I see someone moved his mic, so Chief Sockman? got to remember to move the mic, then turn it on. <laughs> uh, April 11th, I represented the city at the Criminal Justice Cabinet. We talked about two items, which was uh, law enforcement records for children that needed to go to court. And then uh, SAC PD did a presentation on their mental health outreach program. Um, so, but other than that, nothing to report for on that committee. Um, this past weekend was busy. Uh, besides the extravaganza, we had our... Um, Honor Guard, which was Officer Castaneda and Officer Hammock at the fifth annual End of Watch Memorial Ball. Um, and then this weekend, both of our dogs competed in the San Joaquin County Nico Memorial um, Canine Competition. And uh, I'm proud to say that uh, both of our teams took the top team award out of all the competitors. And then they won a, each one of the dogs and handler team uh, won a variety of different uh, competitions inside of that competition. So very proud of both of the efforts there. Uh, this coming uh, week is National Public Safety Telecommunication Telecommunicator Week, which is our dispatchers. And uh, Trista Webb is our dispatcher of the year for this year. Um, coming up, we have uh, every 15 minutes is April 23rd. April 25th is CDCR's Bring Your Child to Work Day. We'll be participating in that. Um, bring out cars and, and displays for that. Uh, April 27th is DEA drug take back. And then on May 2nd is the Sacramento County um, Officer Memorial, um, Police Officer Memorial Ceremony at Woodlake Park on Arden Way. And then on May 6th is the California Peace Officer Memorial uh, Induction Ceremony at the Capitol. And that's it. Thank you. Um, rumor has it there was some kind of contest between you and the vice mayor at the extravaganza. He lost miserably. <laughs> what was that? The, 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 the pull ups? <laughs> no, I actually, I think I did one. I think I did two more, but he has the gear, so. I think he, 400 there's pounds no, of gear, no, is that what it is? There is zero video of him doing any pull ups. <laughs> You're right. There is. Oh, he says he did seven. He, I didn't see it. You're right. Nobody saw it. Uh, he quit. I, he he went first, so that was unfair. And he quit. I know he had still a few more in him. So, <laughs> <laughs> with forty pounds of gear, right? right? And almost fifty-two. I think I I feel pretty good about that. So, <laughs> okay. City Manager Hagland, do you have anything? Well, since I uh, began my interim role uh, just a little over a week ago, I have had the opportunity to meet with each of the department heads and receive uh, uh, a lot of downloaded information, so to speak, and uh, a little bit like uh, drinking from a fire hose at, uh, at, at times. But I, I just do want to let you know that uh, each of the department heads um, have been uh, very welcoming and gracious and, and uh, providing me with a lot of information so that we can deal with the items that you set forth for me uh, during my, my role here as the interim city manager, uh, primarily budget and, and beginning to implement aspects of your strategic plan when, when we get that uh, finally wrapped up. A lot of things happening in the community and uh, the, the department head team is, is right there working all those issues and, uh, and, and working with their staff. So. Uh, thus far, I've been, been very pleased with that and uh, look forward to, uh, to moving all those things forward. Good to know. And we have a sit-in attorney, Iris Yang. Welcome. I forgot Hi, to welcome you at the beginning. thank you. Nice to be back. Uh, nice to see you and some new faces on the council. Um, I have nothing to report, though, but thank you for letting me come. It's been a great meeting. Thank you. Council Member Campion, good to have you back. Thank you. Anything? No, other than the one meeting I attended earlier today, that's it. Councilmember Lozano? I have a few things. Um, I want to just say that uh, the <laughs> extravaganza this weekend, although I couldn't stay the entire time, was very well done, very well organized. 
Um, everyone had their pop-ups ready to go for the people that were coming at 9 o'clock. And um, like I said, it was just really well organized. I like the fact that we have um, 4th Street marked with stall numbers. So um, I was bringing some things for our Rotary Club. And I asked the person at the entry, uh, where do I go? Where's Rotary? And he told me the number. And uh, it was really easy to find. And so um, I really like that idea. Um, anyhow, so it was very well done. Um, the CAPS Volunteer Appreciation Luncheon last, last week or the week before? Last Monday. Um, last Monday um, was uh, a great time. Uh, I think it's really important that uh, we as a, an organization recognize those who um, do so much and volunteer in our, in our community. Uh, some of the CAPS volunteers were um, at like 3,000 hours. That's a ton of time. And, um, and they are very, um, very helpful when it comes to special events and blocking roadways and doing so, those sorts of things. So had a great time at that. Um, I also wanted to say Happy Dispatcher Week. I know that's not the name of it, but <laughs> we'll call it that. Um, and then lastly, um, the Kasumda CSD Administration Building is going to be reopened. Uh, they're going to have a <coughs> reopening ceremony, and I don't know if you all received an invitation, but you did. if you haven't, it's Thursday, April 25th um, at 5 o'clock at 8820 Elk Grove Boulevard. Um, I, I think it's important for as many of us uh, from the city of Galt uh, to go and support our neighbors to the north um, that, that actually provide great fire service for us here in our city. So uh, it's April 25th, Thursday, uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and that's all I have for now. For now, thank you. Vice Mayor Farmer. Yeah, a few things. First, uh, welcome back, Kurt. Thanks. Um, I know you were dealing with family matters, so. Um, we got our community cleanup day for <coughs> April with the beautification committee. Um, didn't have a huge turnout of people, but you know, it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality of what we get done. So I think we had like 10 people show up. We had some Girl Scouts, some new faces, and uh, we did the Old Town area. Um, and, and to precede the extravaganza, we want to make sure that we, you know, we cleaned up that area preceding that event. And, and we, we, did, we picked up a lot. It was like a truck pickup load. And uh, thank you again for Calways for always donating the uh, dumpster for that. They're very generous to do that. Come drop it off and pick it up after. So um, I want to thank the beautification for keep doing that. And if you are interested in being a part of that, um, watch for the dates. Try to post them on online and, and on the marquees of the parks. Um, when we do that, we'd love to see more volunteers. The extravaganza is rich and um, Paige mentioned it was it was awesome, you know, huge attendance. The weather was awesome. I think it was a complete hit. Um, nothing negative to say at all. I, ever, I heard a lot of good feedback from everybody, and it was great to see that many people out um, enjoying the Easter weather. Like, we found that little pocket of weather between the storms. It was perfect, so it was great. Um, went to Civil War Days at McFarland Ranch. That was great. Um, unfortunately, conflicted with extravaganza on the same weekend. So I think the Historical Society is going to coordinate with those folks next year and try to uh, pick a weekend that doesn't conflict and kind of expand on it, advertise a little more. But it, it was phenomenal for even uh, for being smaller than what they had hoped. But if you have a chance to see that next year, it, we, we actually think that that could be a stellar event for Galt. Um, the people out there that participated, the reenactors said it's one of the best venues they've ever been to. They loved it. And actually, on that note, they commented on school day, so on Friday they bring out the, the children from the schools and they huh. go around and it's like a teaching thing. And uh, one of the, the main guys that's been a part of it forever complimented um, on how well behaved the Galt students were. <laughs> he says, you know, we go to these towns and some of these students, he's like, they were really well behaved and they're very tentative, you know, and they, they were paying attention and all that, so I wanted to pass that along to, to teachers and, um, and school representatives out there that... Um, had, they were out there or took their students out there that they um, were complimented. And then um, last thing is, you know, it was good to see um, our interim city manager, Tom, out many events. I've probably seen him like so many times <coughs> since he's been in when I saw him at Extravaganza. I hear he went to the Civil War, but I didn't see him out there. Um, 
but um, he came to a local a shop local event. Um, he's been very uh, out there in the community, and that's what we really want to see. Is you know him. I introduced him to some people, and I had a couple citizens come up and kind of were kind of laying into me about something, and he was sitting next to me, and I'm like, well, this is our city manager. <laughs> it was kind of awkward, <laughs> but but um, yeah, it was it was good. We 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 want him to be a part of the community, and that's what we expect of our city manager to to really be out there and and in in the thick of things and enjoying the, the community and the event. So thank you, Tom, for doing that. And I think that's all I had. Councilmember Sandu? Oh, well, uh, first of all, I'm sorry if uh, I cannot attend any public uh, events for last two weeks, and I maybe cannot attend for next, uh, next couple of weeks. I'm uh, going to preparation of all of my daughter's wedding. So <laughs> sorry for that. Thank you. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Um, I went to the extravaganza. It was, I can't believe it's the 10th time, 10th year. Yeah, it was the 10th anniversary. Um, loved the, um, the promenade that we did for that. So it, it was a great event. Um, funniest thing was when they were throwing the eggs off the, the egg drop off the fire ladder and as soon as he'd throw one the kids would run under to go see if it broke and they're like wait we have to throw more <laughs> get out of the way so they everyone had a lot of fun um great to see some of the restaurants out there along with the food vendors um it was a it was really good day i really appreciate that and we can thank um public director selling and gal weber for getting those numbers on there so getting making that happen for our future events um, also, I attended the CAPS luncheon, and they're just a wonderful group, and I enjoy that every year. It was, it was a wonderful party. They decorated, and so nice to acknowledge them. Um, they were very helpful at the um, extravaganza. They were just running around, blocking off roads so the cars didn't come into the event and doing a great job. Um, the chamber luncheon is coming up Thursday at Barsetti's, so hopefully if... I think it's past our RSVB time, but we'll report on that later. And is there, I've had some comments about wanting to move these comments more to the middle of the meeting. This is an early meeting, but when the meetings go till nine, sometimes when we wait till nine for our accolades, um, the people have left. Is there, I know you've mentioned that you want to move those comments. Yeah, I know. I, I think in the past it's been in the front and it's been in the back and this and that, but <coughs> I think this, for short meetings like this, it's, it's okay, but we have long meetings sometimes and there's some things that, you know, like right now, I think a lot of people that would come to a meeting would get really bored with all the mundane stuff that we deal with up here. But we really want to be able to comment on some things that we've done and things in the community we've attended and, and things that really relate directly to the people that are watching. And unfortunately, we only get to say at the very end, and it's like everybody's like, they're not going to camp out that long. So I wish we could have um, a different organization on that where we could mm -hmm. at least have an opportunity. Is that something we want to consider? Yeah, I, I, I would consider that. I would just hope, um, want to do it with whatever, within our policy. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, if we have the <coughs> flexibility then to do that, then absolutely. Like My only point. concern would be that if you have scheduled matters, that you have people attending, particularly notice public hearings, I would think that it would be an inconvenience to those uh, to sit through whatever this portion is, um, when in fact, you know, that's, we're doing the business of the city. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to it, but I, I'd hate to see it just push important issues to a later hour where people are waiting, rather than, than doing it on a more timely, in a more timely fashion earlier on the agenda. That, that's, that's kind of my observation. Okay, maybe I can look into it with the city manager and see what the, if there's any possibility, or then we'll bring it back to council for some discussion. Let's see. Yeah, I I, I get your point, um, Kurt, and I, I think if um, we typically like if we have like citizens that are coming and doing something, we try to like put that in the beginning and try to get them out in and out. If it's something somebody coming to do a presentation from you know, I don't know, developer or something like that. You I mean, finance, weren't you? Yeah. No, I mean, I just, you know, I don't, I don't feel that bad about making them people wait. Like just because, I mean, it's a one shot deal, but for, but weekly as we, as we have stuff, 
I mean, I, I, I think like at the end of the meeting where we bring up something that we want to put on the future agenda, I, I think that that comment time is what I was kind of understood that um, our comments at the end could be used for at that end, but it, it tends to be where we tend to thank people for things in the community and mm -hmm. talk about events that like Chief went to and, and the, the comments. And I think it's important that the community, more of the community can see when our department heads comment on things like, we want to thank so-and-so for this and that and that kind of stuff. I know it's not the official business, but I think it's seriously a really important part of what we do. Perfect. And so that's, that's, why I would, that's why I really would like to see it, uh, something in the more sooner than later. Okay, I'll work with Tom and see. We'll discuss Paul, that. you have any comment? Uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't have a problem with, uh, you know, if uh, all these comments come in the beginning, uh, but the look at the policies and let's, uh, you know, the city manager <coughs> bring it to the next meeting and then we make a decision. Okay, so we have consensus to bring, to review the procedure yes. guidelines? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. With that. I, oh. I have one last thing. Okay. Um, under items for future agenda. Um, I had a, 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 sh a very, very brief conversation with uh, Council Member Campion um, at the, actually at the strategic planning workshop. He probably doesn't even remember the conversation, but, um, <laughs> uh, and, and then also with uh, Chief Sockman. I, I think it's um, what I would like to bring back to our council is um, a discussion about Assembly Bill 392, which in my opinion, um, does great things to um, provide uh, our police officers that work in our city at a great disadvantage. Um, and by doing that, I believe, and I, don't, and I know the city attorney is gonna get a little nervous here, but I just believe that it doesn't uh, allow our officers to protect our citizens the way they should. Nor themselves. So, um, however we need to do that, um, I would also, with that, like to bring uh, Senate Bill 3 230 forward for discussion. Um, I think it's a great alternative to AB 392 and, and provides some additional training for officers, mandated state, state mandated training. Um, and so, what I would like to see at the end of this, if the council is, after we discuss it after, on an agendized item, is um, either a resolution or a letter of support uh, for Senate Bill 230 and uh, a letter of opposition or resolution of opposition to Assembly Bill 392 to uh, continue to protect our officers who are out there fighting crime every day and protecting our citizens. So, Chief, do you have any, any insight to this? I, the Chief mentioned today that another local city uh, provided a, um, a resolution recently on the same issue. Yeah, so the city of Citrus Heights at the last council, <coughs> um, they unanimously voted to uh, send a letter of support uh, for Assembly Bill 230 and a letter of opposition for Assembly Bill 392. Um, so I think it's very, very important that we, uh, as a community, start to talk about those two issues, or those two assembly bills, um, because depending upon how um, it is voted on or approved uh, through um, our, our assembly and through whether it goes to the voters or not, um, could drastically change the way uh, we in law enforcement do our business. And so, uh, but I'll be happy to bring back a presentation if council would like uh, on those two uh, and try to provide as much uh, information on both of those uh, bills. Um, so I think that the, uh, the, what I'd like to kind of throw out there, and the attorney can kick me under the table if I've gone too far, uh, the best way to describe um, what is being proposed with uh, 392 is if you're driving on Highway 99 southbound and you're coming up to Central Galt Interchange, it's a two-lane highway, there's a shoulder on the left uh, and there's an off-ramp on the right, and if you, um, and all of a sudden right in front of you, and you're doing the speed limit, and you're doing everything right, and right in front of you a, uh, uh, a semi jackknife's right in front of you, and you have to make a decision, split second. We're not talking about seconds, we're talking about a fraction of a second, 
And you have to make a decision what you're going to do. Are you going to move to the left, crash in the car in front of you, or pull to the right? And so you make a decision that you're going to pull to the right because you know there's an off-ramp that way, and you're hoping that you can swerve and miss that. And there's a minivan full of a uh, family of four on your right, and you strike that minivan, and you kill everybody inside. You made a decision. You think it was the right decision uh, under the circumstances, but you had a split second to make that decision. And um, because of that decision, um, and because of eyewitness statements, and because people can sit back for days, weeks, months, or years to review all the data that was out there, and then they determine that you made a wrong decision there, you, you, you will be prosecuted criminally for those actions. And so um, from our perspective, uh, police chiefs and, and law enforcement, uh, that's what uh, Assembly Bill uh, 392 will do to our officers. Uh, so, um, but anyway, that's a little precursor. I, 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 have, I will uh, provide a presentation for the future council meeting. Um, so, um, but it, it's, it's gonna be a tough, debate, I think, for the state and uh, for the voters. And, um, you know, I think just like every other bill that goes out, uh, you know, it's how they market it. And so this uh, Assembly Bill 392 is being marketed as a uh, only using force when it's necessary. Well, of course we're only going to use force when it's <coughs> necessary, but that's how it's being marketed. And so those that don't read and understand what these bills actually say and what the long-term implications of uh, the decisions that we make. Um, just go back and look at when uh, the voters voted on Proposition 47. Proposition 47 was the Safe Schools Act. Well, to all that, and the money that w was not going into the prisons was supposed to go back to the schools. If that was the case, then uh, I would be questioning why uh, Sacramento Unified School District has no money. Um, so they haven't seen a dime of that money and uh, our streets are not safer. So anyway, uh, with that, uh, I'd be happy to bring it back. Okay, I concur. Anybody else okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Meeting adjourned.